Okay, I'm now going to show you a complete demo of the Risk Assessor app from the moment you download it right through to the moment that you'll be able to upload to our cloud service. So I've downloaded the free version for an iPad, um, so download Risk Assessor Lite from the App Store. The very first screen that you'll see will be your company details. The reason we ask you to put these in is because they're going to appear on the report. The report is personalised, it'll have your logo on it and your address. So you can click these fields here and start typing. Um, ideal for small companies. For larger companies where there might be hundreds or even thousands of people that are going to be using the same address and the same generic information, the same logo, you might want to use the cloud import option, which is located here. So if we press that button, what it will do is it will connect straight through to the cloud account. I'll show you a little bit about that shortly. So it will ask you for a username. So you'll, you'll be provided with uh, a username once you've set up the account. If I type in uh, our test username just here. Shouldn't take me too long to put these in. What you'll see when I click on log in is it should pull the information straight from the server. So you can imagine if you've got a thousand people all over the world they haven't all got to go through a lengthy setup process. They can simply use their login credentials and the information will, will come straight up. You can also upload your own logo. So small company, you'd simply click on browse and you'd find the logo yourself. But you'll see that I've just pulled it straight from the server. So it makes it very, very quick and easy to get through the setup process. Okay, so add a user or risk assessor. This is the person that's going to be doing the actual risk assessment. So if I put my name in here, and my position within the company. The box underneath is for your signature. Why do we want your signature? Well, it's just a nice little feature again. It will appear on the report a little bit later on. So when you've completed the report, it'll be you that's signing it off. You can use a stylus or your finger to add your signature there. And you'll see I'm now added to the user list. You can add as many pe people as you like. Now, on the report as well, it will give you the opportunity to add up to six key staff within that area. So the people that are going to be taking responsibility for the risk assessment and for that area to keep it safe. So I'll just put a couple in here. You'll see on the right hand side what we've got is it will say employed or contractor. So if we put in here for example a guy called Matt and then click on contractor it will say which company does he work for. That would also appear on the report. Click on next we'll go straight into our risks and our actions list. So the app comes with probably about 10 example hazards that we've preloaded. Now each one of these examples has also got control measures allocated to it. You can add as many of your own custom risks as you like. So if you click on choose icon for example, you can choose an icon, enter whatever you like here for your hazard and whatever you like for as many controls as you want to add. You can also set default worst case outcome and likelihood given the precautions in place there. So you would click on done. I'm not actually going to add that one. I'm just going to go back. So you can add as many hazards as you like. We'll now click on next. These hazards, incidentally, they're all editable as you go. So you don't have to use the one that's preloaded. You can add to it. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in a, in a bit. So we're now at the risk site. We've, we've done all the setup process for the app. Um, we've got two options. We can skip, which you can see here, or we can take a photo. I'm going to skip to start with just to show you how it would work. If you skip, you're presented with your list of hazards. So you'd go through, you'd select the relevant hazards, and you would simply put a tick box over here to select it. I'm not going to show you too much on that because the photo option makes for, a, I think, a better assessment. So if we click on photo, it would ask us to, to you can take a photo there and then at the risk site. Alternatively, you could select a photo that's already on the device, which I'm going to do here. It'll then take you through to the grid screen. Now what you'll see on the grid screen are those hazards that we looked at earlier on. They're at the bottom, so there's an icon for each hazard. If you want a reminder of what each icon relates to, you click the key at the bottom there, and you can see the one at the top is manual handling, the second one down is slips, trips, etc, etc. So you simply grab the icon from the bottom and drag and drop it over the photo where you think it would be relevant. 
drag as many over the grid as you like, click on next, and we get into the project detail screen. So now what I'm going to do is give it a project name. So I'm just going to put test in there for the purpose of this, of this video, but you can put whatever you like. You can input the work start date, the end date, and the assessment date. And we can select, you know, we, we set up early, myself as an assessor. If you've got more than one assessor set up, it would be here that you would click and then you could select that individual. Key staff working in area, we selected two. So I'll, I'll put both of those on the report there. And um, Work description, again, you can be as detailed as you like, but I'm just going to put test in there for the purpose of this. So now we get into a, a few key questions for a risk assessment. The first one being, are any further assessments required? If they are, you simply select them by clicking. So we'll say fire and manual handling. Persons involved or affected by the task, we might say employees and contractors, and any special groups where individual assessments are required, I'll say service users. We'll click on next at the bottom there. Now what we're in is the, the actual hazard itself. So all we've really done so far is drag an icon over a photograph. We now want to get inside the hazard and it's now we can actually click on the hazard and edit it as much as we want to make it as, as, as relative to that particular assessment. It, might, it may well be you want to leave the default entry in there, which is absolutely fine, but you've got the freedom to be able to change it and make it as custom as you like. You can select the worst case outcome. So it's one of five, so we might say lost time injury. We can then select the likelihood, so we may say very likely. On the right hand side we've got control measures and these control measures is exactly the same principle. So they're already predefined but you can click and you can edit them as much as you like. I'm not going to edit this one, I'll just uh, I'll select the one we've already got. So manual handling, ensure everybody involved has received manual handling training. Click on the right hand side there and we'll say that's already in place. Use a safety check trolley, we'll say that that one is going to be required. Break down heavy loads, we'll say that's required. So you probably get the idea. We'll go into the next one. Slips, trips and falls. So we're going to say protective non-slip footwear is going to be required. Area to be tidy and clean is already in place. So you, you may have to do this several times if you've added quite a few hazards, but the whole process is relatively straightforward and simple to do. Click on next at the bottom. Final question we get is, is a follow-up assessment required? If it is, click yes. It'll ask when that assessment's required for. So select the date and when you want a reminder. Now what's going to happen, it's going to sync with the calendar on the device and you're going to get an alarm that's going to go off when you've set it saying that you need to go and do a follow-up assessment with whatever the assessment name is again. Click on finish and it's going to generate a PDF risk assessment report straight from the data that we've just collected. So what you'll see is the address that we entered earlier on, our logo, the project name, the description of work, any further assessments required, persons involved or affected, any individual assessments required for, your start date, your estimated completion date, your, your key people in the area. And if we scroll down, you'll see the hazards identified, controls already in place, worst case outcome, likelihood without action, and any additional control measures required. You've got your score, which is automatically worked out here, your score key, which highlights all the information you could need, who's done the risk assessment with their signature and when they've done it. And then if we scroll down, a photograph of the risk site. If we click on save at the bottom there, you'll see it's added it to our home screen. So our first risk assessment is complete. So, and, and this is, it is as easy as that. That's, straight, that's using the free version straight from, uh, from the App Store or Google Play. Um, you get, they've got two options. You could click the email button here. The email feature, if you buy the full, the full version, is £4.99 or you can upgrade from the free version, um, that's 4 99 again. You only have to buy it once, so you can create as many risk assessments as you like and use the email feature as much as you like. It's never gonna cost you any more than 4 99 Now, that might be great if you're quite a small company and you're, you're doing occasional risk assessments, that's, that will be all you need. If you've got lots of people, engineers or d uh, different sites, and, and you want all of the risk assessments to be collated and stored in, in one central location, what you really want to do is make it even easier for yourself and, and that's using the cloud feature. So you'd simply click on the assessment that you've just created, click on send to cloud and using the credentials we typed in earlier it will connect straight through to your cloud account. So you can see again I've, I've set this up as if there's, uh, there's offices in five different countries. If we go into UK for example 
we can then select the department within that um, within that country. So it might be goods in, and we'll click on upload. And in a matter of seconds, that risk assessment is going to be uploaded to you, your um, to your cloud account. So if we just move the iPad slightly out the screen now, and we'll go on to the cloud account itself. And again, with a 3G signal, Wi-Fi or 4G is literally going to take a couple of seconds for, for that risk, risk assessment to be sent through. And this is what the cloud account looks like. So we're not on a device anymore. We're actually just on the internet. So any web browser, you'll be able to open this up. You'll be able to log into it. And if we go into the UK folder, and then uh, I think it was good in, I'll just put that one. You can see there's the risk assessment I've just created. You can see it's got a follow-up date there. And if you click on it, seconds from, from actually being created anywhere in the world, it will load it straight up as a, uh, as a, as a PDF. So excuse me, let me just uh, load it up in my Adobe Acrobat. There it is. So you can see it's identical to the uh, to the assessment that we created on the iPad. And we can obviously print it, we can email it, we can save it. It's a PDF, so it can be integrated into any existing CMS system that you might have. Um, what makes it a, a little bit better as well is I've just selected one assessment there. It may be that you want all the assessments from the UK office, in which case you select the folder or USA, you click on download, and it will download a zipped folder with all of the PDFs in there for the, for the entire office. You can also set access rights. So if, if we were to click here, we could give uh, two users, so these two users that we've got set up, either full access or read-only access. So this is particularly good if you've got 100 stores, for example, but you don't want all stores seeing each other's risk assessments. So it's, you, you really can restrict who can and who can't go in. But the thing to remember is that there's an edit feature on the app as well. So not only can you actually upload the assessment, but if we go onto View Cloud, you'll be able to see that you can download as well. So we'll be able to download any assessments that have already been created by other users if we've got access rights to them, and it will download them straight to your app. It may be that you're doing a follow-up, so you're going to go back and you're going to do uh, you're going to edit an assessment that somebody else has created. So you don't have to start again. You can go straight into somebody else's assessment and start editing it to make it up to date to uh, to, to to look at existing controls that have um, have, have been put into place. So. What you'll also see on the right hand side here is uh, a calendar. So not only does the user get an alert that will come up on the device saying they need to go and do a follow up, but you will be able to see um, who's got what assessments coming up on the calendar. You won't only be able to see that on the 22nd, which is a Friday, James Boatwright needs to go and do test assessment again. If you click on it, it will take you through to their previous assessment. So it's very, very quick and easy to be able to, uh, to use and keep an eye on who's got what coming up. Now, one good feature on the app is uh, if we go back into the iPad here, is the uh, the ability to be able to uh, to add your own hazards and your own control measures. So, if you want to do it on the app, you would simply select a, a relative icon, and you could type in the details for your hazard here and the details for your control measures. This is fantastic. The the issue is you could spend hours creating your own hazard library on your app. Now you wouldn't be able to send that to somebody else's phone because if they've used the same icon, it's going to get very, very confusing. And this is where the cloud account comes in. With the cloud account, you can set up a company library. So you'd simply click on add new hazard here, select the icon, or with the cloud, you can actually upload your own icon. We select that one there. You can be as detailed as you like here. I'm just going to put test in just to give you the idea. Click on the update. Sorry, I'll select a, uh, a default worst case and a default likelihood. Click on update, and you'll see at the bottom of our list here, we've now got test. If we then go back into our iPad, we click on cloud import. What's going to happen now is if we click on view all, it's not going to overwrite the, the, uh, the hazards we've spent hours creating it's going to add another library so you can see we can now select a different library and immediately you can see that we've got our test hazard here so it makes it very very easy for the company to be able to create their own library of hazards remembering these are just default entries the user can still edit them to make them relevant to the assessment he's doing but it gives them a really good starting point to be able to to get going from 
Okay, back into the uh, back into the cloud account. So we've uh, we've created a risk assessment. We can manage those risk assessments. We can download them. We can upload them straight into our CMS system. Um, what we can also do is completely manage our account. So in here, what you can see are your company details, and this is where earlier on you saw that I um, I bought in the address and the logo straight from this information here. So if we click on update, this information can be updated and then you'd go back to the app and simply import the new details. What you can also do is upgrade your plan at any point. Now it might be that you want to add some space to your account. You would click here to upgrade, a click of a button, you can very simply increase the space. It may be that you want to add some users. Now there's two ways you can add the users. If you, if you were to click on add users, it would ask you for their email addresses. They would then get an email to activate their account and they would be added. Now you can input those manually for up to 10, any more than 10, and you can simply import a CSV file. So you would need, a, if, as long as you've got a CSV with all, all of your users on it, it makes it extremely easy to add those guys to your account. The, uh, the My Users button is over here, and you can see you get a list of the users on the account and how much space they've used. Now it might be that you're paying for, uh, for three users, but this guy here, he might leave. Uh, you, you don't have to pay for somebody else to suddenly join. You simply click on edit, you can edit the email address, and then the new person takes over up until the next payment date. You can also create groups. So it may be you've got 2,000 users, but you don't want to spend forever trying to allocate everybody access rights to, the, to, to their own folder. It might be that you want to say, right, I'm going to put 50 people in this group and they're all going to have access to this particular folder. So it makes it very, very easy to be able to manage. The, um, the app, as, you, as I've said earlier, the, the app is uh, completely free to download if you're using the, the cloud feature. I encourage you to download it, play around with it and see how you get on because it is it's a very, very powerful tool. The, um, the cloud system, if we log out here, you'll see you can pay monthly for it and it would be £7.99 per month uh, for the company. If you pay yearly, that comes down to about £75 per year, I think it is. Um, that's for 150 megabytes. It pros up, so it would be about 150 quid if you wanted to go up to 300 meg and so on and so on. For any additional users, it's £2.99 per month. So it's still we're trying to target in every every type of company and make it affordable for everybody really. Um, I mean we've we've worked out that if somebody's earning minimum wage in the UK, they need to save I think it was 25 minutes per month for the app to have paid for itself. So I mean give it a go, download the app, make yourself familiar with it, use it, create some assessments. But also it's very very easy to uh, to take use of our free trial. Everything I've just done you can do using the free trial. You can have a team of people out there using the same trial login and have people immediately start uploading straight to cloud. All it's going to ask you for is your, your name, uh, your, comp your company details. There's no payment information or anything like that. You can even upload your logo straight away. So give it, give it a go. Um, if you have any questions, give us an email on sales at riskassessor.net or give us a call on 01480 492 183. We'll always here, uh, be here. We'll, we'll be happy to help. Thanks for taking a look.